We begin our worship this morning with singing together hymn number 100, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. To those joining in on Zoom, my apologies, the words on the screen weren't the right words. Those in church, you had the right books. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to St. John the Baptist Church, Abthorpe, on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Later today, we have evening prayer at Slapton at 5.30. The Reverend George, if, is it on the screen? Did you move things on? Happy Mail, that's it. The Reverend George has asked me to remind you about an event called Happy Mail or an activity called Happy Mail, but he's having an introduction to this on the 28th of May, so that's Saturday the 28th of May, 7.30 in the evening at St. James the Great Church, Paulusbury. So if you'd like to find out more and be involved perhaps with this uh, way of communicating with our families in the benefice, uh, do go along to that, and George would love to meet you and to talk you through what that activity entails. Next Sunday, we have at 9.15 in the morning in Whittlebury, the Eucharist, and then also at 11 o'clock at Slapton, the Holy Eucharist. 10.30 in the morning at Paulusbury is Messy Church. In the afternoon at three o'clock, because it is also Rogation Sunday next Sunday, uh, there is an event through at, and it's good to see the calls is here, it, it's at Pitts Farm. Uh, Claire and George will be looking after that service through at Pitts Farm, and it's followed by refreshments. So uh, well worth taking the time next Sunday, 3 p.m. 
and it replaces the evening service in Silverstone. Thank you. The following Sunday is the fifth Sunday in the month, which means the, there's one Eucharist for the benefits at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it will be through at Slapton, at St. Bottle's Church. And it's going to be led by the Reverend Linda Randall because I'm going to be on holiday. So I'll be at Teze, worshipping there. Well, actually, by 10.30, that's 11.30 there, I'll be in the car going for lunch. But please do come along. That's the only service on the fifth Sunday, the last Sunday in May. Hopefully now we've got this prayer petitions on the screen. Special prayer requests. Uh, we pray for, I'm going to give you the names. The names of the sick will be in the intercessions, but we've also got some recently departed to think about. Uh, those who are unwell are Sarah Hughes, Joyce Gerlach, Raymond Gerlach, Jane Gerlach, Martha Waterworth, Paul Larkin, and Jane Turland. And of the recent dep recently departed, we've got baby Robin May Thompson, Patricia Tolson, and Jenny Evans. So let's keep them in our prayers. But more positively, bands of marriage to publish. I published the bands of marriage between Paul James Joyce of the parish of Paulusbury and Amanda Louise Tapp, also of the parish of Paulusbury. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why this couple should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it now. Jolly good. We pray for Paul and Amanda. Lord God, may your love complete their love, your grace empower and protect them, and your presence be ever with them to make their lives a blessing and a joy. Amen. Amen. And so now back to our Eucharist service for this day. We turn to the black books on page 167 uh, on the screen. Hopefully the words will just come up for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Turning the page, we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to sit or kneel for our prayers of penitence. We begin by reflecting on the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to stand to sing the Gloria, glory in the highest to the God of heaven. It's on the additional little piece of paper that was given out with your books this morning, or it's on the screen on Zoom. And so here in the presence of God, let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading, which will be our reading from the New Testament. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision there was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. 
He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced and then praised God saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Our next hymn for the gradual is number 126, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. During the supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. 
Please be seated. You know what it is? When your preacher drums up extra people to come to church because she's preaching on that Sunday. I, 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 it's not because I'm preaching, they want to be here. <laughs> and yet, every other message we get is we need more bums on seats, isn't it? You do your best. <laughs> You are welcome, you can come again, don't stay away. Um, yeah, I, I said to Paul when I came in that I was looking for some divine inspiration. This is a sermon of two halves, much like yesterday's cup final. We may go into extra time. I am hoping to avoid penalties. Let's see how we get on. Because it's of two halves, I'm not really sure which half to start with, but in order to make sure we get the Bible bit done, let's start there. These two readings that we've had this morning are the answer to everything. That's all you need to know. But I bet you weren't listening that closely that you can actually say, well, yes, absolutely. This and this, those are, those are our Christian take-home messages and that's how we're going to live. So let's just do some revision. We'll start with the Gospel reading. A new commandment I give to you that you must love one another. You must love one another as I have loved you. And by this, everyone else will know that you are Christian. You are a follower of Christ. Well, that's okay, isn't it? I mean, we, we all love one another. Do we? Even amongst us sitting here, do we always love one another? I know the answer to that is no, because I'm here. So, why is that an answer to everything? Well, let's just do a little bit more revision. If we live in a community, even let's just stay inside church at the moment, if we live in a community where we are in a loving relationship with the people around us, what benefits do we get? Why is that a good thing? Is it realistic? What do we mean by loving? Because, you know, that's got to stop somewhere. Loving. Do you know what I've brought it down to? Because this works for me. I've decided that if you are a loving person and you are showing love in your interactions with other people, that amounts to no tutting. You know, when you're doing okay, you've got relationships with people, you're muddling along, you're working together on whether it's fundraising or village ventures or even within your own households. And then, we all do it, don't we? Like, how many times a day? So I've decided that for me to work with being in loving relationships with people, I have to work on the factor. I don't do that out loud, I don't think. <laughs> people may tell me otherwise, but I, but I think, you know, we don't come to church knowing that we have killed somebody or um, I'm trying to think of some sins, stolen some stuff or um, hoarded, you know, being greedy, coveted thy neighbour's wife or any other possession. You, she's not a possession, that was a bad sentence. We'll do that another day. Um, but, but we all come to church knowing that we get things wrong. Now, I said very early on in my ministry, I don't like the word sinner. I'm going to revisit that later. I know we're all sinners. I can accept that. I'm, I'm a committed Christian. I get it. I just don't think it's a very user-friendly word. Anyway, loving relationships, what do we get out of them? If we are able to live without tutting, that's your take home, we have peace. You don't have fallings out and you don't have arguments and you don't have Putin. He's not here. We have justice. If we are living in loving relationships, we are fair. We have kindness. We have, oh, dare I say it, joy. We have security. We have stability. Nobody is contradicting me there, feel free to. 
I'm going to take it that you believe what I'm saying. Okay, great. So, a new commandment, love one another, answer to everything, perfect. Let's go to Acts. Why did we have the Acts reading this morning alongside this one, if this is the answer to everything? One of the criticisms of this passage is that it sounds as though Jesus is talking solely to the disciples that are present in the room with him. Love one another as I have loved you. Did Jesus ever say, make sure you really love the people in your household, don't worry about anybody else? No, of course not. The Acts reading is told through Peter's vision, but it is that uh, acceptance of the Gentiles at, at this point in time. But for us today, that reading is an example of the acceptance of all. So Jesus came for all people. And the biggest uh, division, if you like, in that time was Jews, Gentiles. Jews had got it right. They're like us sitting in church now. They'd got it right. They were sorted. Let's not worry too much about much else. And this is the moment that they actually penny drops. I mean, you've got, this might be contentious. Peter was known as the rock because you can lean on him because he's dependable. I think it was because it always took at least three efforts to get something through to him. But anyway, here, this apparently is the third time, uh, Peter has been told you have to accept everybody. And now he's delivering that message. Christianity, the following of Jesus, being a disciple is open to anyone. And we must love anyone. We must love those who haven't yet come to Christ. We must demonstrate that that is what it is to be Christians in loving relationships. Right, you're with me so far. You're either bored rigid because you're all very still or you're following really closely and I'm going with the latter. So why is this the answer to everything? Well, I've had a series of um, interesting, frustrating, um, yeah, um, sort of semi-unanswerable uh, conversations. Some recently, some not so recently, and they've all sort of come together. I was asked last week by another reader what the good bits of Christianity are. And whilst you sit there with bated breath and wait for me to tell you that, I said, if I had the answer to that, I'd be a much better evangelist. And then I thought, oh, wow, I stand as a reader in front of you all, and I have difficulty answering that question. I think I need to do some homework. That's one of the conversations. I have a conversation stuck in my head from about five years ago that I am eternally disappointed by. A conversation with somebody who um, it, I am very close to. We are good friends. This conversation was not meant as um, a derisory, however it was. So I'm talking with a person that I'm working with, and he says, yeah, but you Christians, you're all right, aren't you? Because you know, you're better than the rest of us. No, we're just more aware of when we get it wrong, I think. We just take a ticking off each week for it rather than carrying on. I'm exactly the same as you are. I'm not preachy about it during work. I, I, I was really offended. I thought, I, I really don't try to come across like that. And most of the Christian people I know don't try to come across like that. I do recognize it has been done though. So that's another one. I have another conversation going on all the time about what can we do? Our worship group meets, what can we do? What services can we provide that will encourage more people to come in? This is the right thing to be doing. I totally accept that. We try different times. We try different styles of service, but you can't force people to come through the door. Why not? We think we're doing everything we can. I mean, I realize quite a lot of it's on a Sunday and that competes with other things. But what are the problems? Here are some of the problems. Apart from the obvious sort of timekeeping and competing with other events, let's take the word sinners. Who wants to get out of bed on a Sunday morning when it is your day of rest to come to a place invariably cold, 
and hear about the fact that you're not a good enough person. I don't. Who wants to come out of a morning and be told they need to repent and hear words like atonement and sacrifice for sin? It's not very current, is it? We're okay with it. We're at a point in our faith where those words have a deep meaning for us. We wouldn't be without them. But if you had no knowledge, it's not a starting point, is it? I can't say to young people that I meet, this is what you need to do. Oh, yeah, it's not a from church. The God squad are out. Okay, we've got generations of people now whose parents haven't even been to church. In fact, they don't have, dare I say it, current knowledge of what it is to have a faith. It's just not... Uh, a, a general way of being or, or something that the majority have contact with. We're a minority group. So then what do we do about it? Where do we stand? Is this all a bit pointless? Should we just not bother? Well, we can't do that, can we? And that's why, for me, those readings are the answer to everything. The only thing we can do, each and every one of us, each and every day, is demonstrate that for us to be followers, this is what's important. Loving. Creating relationships, environments, communities where there is stability, where there is trust, where there is joy. We're not just up against a timetable. We're not just up against um, competition. Oh, it's cricket on a Sunday morning. I can't. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, no, that's all right. That's your choice. That's, that's okay. But there, is, there are too many other factors. That we, we're not going to be able to say this is the answer in terms of our provision. This is the answer in terms of our attitude. And I like that because I think I can give it a go. I like that because I think I can do my little bit. I may even get it right sometimes. But that's what we can all do. Now, unusually, I've given you a sermon that left you all looking at me with completely straight faces. And, and, and I mean, you're, you're all looking and attentive, but I usually like to raise a smile. And I have mentioned joy. So can we just focus on the joy for one moment? Yes, I can go out and do that. Yes, it is that easy. I've got all sorts of bits and pieces here, things that I read which prompted me to speak like this, and we're going into extra time, so I'm not going to read them all to you, but they meant a lot to me and they, you know, have fed into what I've said. No tutting. Lots of loving. Generosity of spirit, I mean. And I'd love you all to feed back to me what an impact you're having in whatever environment you're in. Oh, well, at least some people are smiling now. <laughs> I will leave it there. No tutting. Thank you. I remember early on when you said that you didn't like the word sin. And, and I tried to use other words, wrongdoing, mistakes, breaking your relationship with God, with each other. We still have sin or trespass in our words, but it's there. Tuh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what I'm going to invite you to do now is if you're able to stand as we now profess our faith, and I hope with a bit of joy. Remember, We've got four books in the, gospel, in, the, in the New Testament, the beginning of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they're called gospel. The other name for gospel, what it actually means, is good news. Christians should be people of good news. Christ has won a victory for each and every one of us. Surely that is joyful.
So with joy in our hearts, and possibly even a bit of a smile on our faces, let's affirm our faith in God as we use the words from the Nicene Creed on page 173. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God has not made, of one being with the Father, who all things from for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious fire, he said the dead and the dead. And as a part of our love of the world, we have a special sense of compassion. We see the needs of others and we hold them before God. And this is what we call our prayers of intercession, uh, which we're now going to have. So I invite you to sit or kneel for these prayers of love. Let us pray. As we pray on this blessed day, let us bring to mind the needs of the world, our communities, the church, the people we know, and ourselves. We pray for the world today with hope for the world tomorrow. Guide us, Lord, that we may be good, considerate, and wise stewards of your creation. Guide our nation to be an example of just democracy in the world. Turn the world from war and violence to peace and compassion. Especially we pray for the Ukraine at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. We pray today for the Church, the body of Christ in the world today. We pray for the Anglican Communion, for our diocese, deanery, and for this benefice. Guide us, good Lord, that we all may know you well, know your will, live by your grace, and proclaim your love through our lives today and always. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Abthorpe and all the other villages and communities of the benefice of this deanery and our county of Northamptonshire. We pray for all amongst whom we live that blessings may be poured upon them and us from Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are unwell, whether in body, mind or spirit. We pray for ourselves, for the many that have troubles, troubles privately, and also for Sarah Hughes, Joyce Gerlach, Raymond Gerlach, Jane Gerlach, Martha Waterworth, Paul Larkin, Jane Turland. We pray for the bereaved, 
and the lonely. We pray also for those who care for others with patience and diligence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have lived this life in the faith and who have now gone on through the gateway of death to live life in paradise, life fulfilled, love complete, and joy experienced. We pray for all who have been dear to us, who have travelled already through the valley of the shadow of death to dwell in your nearer presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before I get you to stand for the piece, I'm just going to, because there's visitors with us who might not know the sign language, I'm going to just teach you the British sign language for peace be with you. There's three parts of it. It's like any other language, though. You do try to be careful with it and do it as accurately as you can. Otherwise, you might be saying something totally different. So be careful with it. Peace. You need your thumbs down, your pointy fingers at the top, join them together, the other fingers out of the way. And you're going to draw them out, bringing them together to a pincer movement. That's peace. Be with is simply your right hand, palm upwards, and just held out in front of you. Be with. And you, common sense really, you point at everybody. So let's well, let's get to that. So I invite you now to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now let us sign, Peace be with you to one another. Peace be with you. We're now going to sing the offertory hymn and apologies to those on Zoom. I've put the slightly wrong words up. So I would advise those in church to use the hymn book. Hymn number 343. Three hundred and forty three. Be thou my vision.
So we come now to the Eucharistic prayer, which is prayer A for Alpha, which begins on page, I think, 184 in your black prayer books. After the opening dialogue, there are special words for the season of Easter, and we will not use anything in a red bracket. Is it 184? Oh, good, I got that right. Something right today. Don't touch at me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body, and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. I invite you to sit or kneel and we turn to page 178 
there to pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Grant us peace. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so that we the flesh of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood. Sorry for those who are watching on Zoom for the bands. The microphone fell on the floor. For communion, what I'm going to do, uh, slightly changing things, I invite you to come to me at the chancel step to receive the sacraments there. Uh, if there's anyone who has difficulties moving to the step, I will then bring the sacraments to you. Claire will be reading the spiritual communion for those at home. The body and the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus, and ask him to be with you now. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen.
apology and the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Yes. The apology and the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. And so we come to our post-communion prayers. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. On page 182 in the Black Prayer Books, we join together to pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I invite you to stand for the prayer of blessing and dismissal, after which we join together for our concluding hymn, number 515, There's a Spirit in the Air. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
the screen. Uh, let's get credit. It's the best we've done. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the souls of the faithful departed by the blessed God rest in peace. Amen. And in glory. Amen. Amen. The mic of things telling you about future services on the screen. And also the next one will be hopefully saying thank you. Thank you to everyone who's taken part. The church was wonderfully prepared and set up this morning when I arrived. What a blessing that is. It was also good to have the music done, to have tech supplies. And I'm not touching was a word of the sermon. Thank you. You were resigned by the Spirit. Thank you to Peter and to Alison also for reading and praying for us in the sermon. Thank you. 